Hi everybody and welcome back to Geezer Rider. This is the continuation on our review of the Gerbing dual channel or dual port heated heat controller, otherwise it's known as a heat troller, and dual wireless remote. If you've not watched the prior video in this segment, I uh, greatly encourage you to do so. This will make a lot more sense. So where we left off is we had what was perceived to be a synchronization issue with the Gerbing dual port heat troller, um, not remembering or not able to communicate um, with the remote controller after a uh, power off sequence or power off time lapse. So we had the original one that I had purchased, which I had labeled suspect. And I think I, I know I told you in the prior video that we reached out to the warming store and they reached out to a gerbing product specialist who said they would send us a replacement warming controller. Obviously it doesn't say suspect on it and that that would cure our issues. Um, by now you've realized on this channel, we're not currently sponsored by anybody. We're not beholden to anybody. You know, we're doing our research. We're doing our own product reviews and we're giving you the information as it comes to us and is divulged to us. So where we left off with the warming store in Gerbing was giving the, the chance to make it right. Um, I had seen a variety of posts online that said that, hey, I've had this issue and um, I've had to replace either the remote controller or the dual channel controller or both in order to correct the problem. And I've also seen other posts that said, you guys are all mad. Everything's working fine for me. I don't know why you're having a problem. So my guess was that this was due to a small production cycle issue um, that had either been corrected since or um, was just now manifesting itself one way or another. So we're going to find out together. I haven't done any previous testing or anything. We're going to go through this live. So it'll take a little longer than it should, but you're getting the real deal, the, the live information. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out our controller and we're going to apply power. This is quite literally a 12 volt motorcycle battery with a, you know, 12 volt heat troller port attached to it. We're going to apply power. to which we should see a status that briefly shows up and then goes away. We'll open up the non-suspect controller. And by default, both of these should be to the left. And if you've watched the previous video, um, you already know. If you haven't, again, go back and watch that through before you bother with this video, because there's so much that's gonna make more sense to you if you watch the previous video. Um, and before we get into this, I should say, what haven't I done? So what have I done? I contacted the warming store and I confirmed with them that my synchronization procedure and my connection procedure was all correct and everything should have worked. They also acknowledged that it didn't work. They also acknowledged that it should have worked um, and they know of other cases where it should have worked and didn't. So it's not a one customer issue. There's a multi-customer issue. Also, what I didn't do was I did not replace the CR2032 battery in the original controller. Um, that wasn't something I felt as a customer I should have to do with a brand new product. And they suspected as well too. And rather than just sending me another CR2032 battery, they sent me this replacement controller. So, again, work with your manufacturers. Mistakes happen, accidents happen, bad products slip, slip through QC every now and then. It doesn't have to be a burn list, you know, type situation where, you know, you're, you're blacklisting a manufacturer forever. It's, it's inconvenient and it's a pain, but give them an opportunity to make it right. And somebody like Gerbing that's been around for a while, they're gonna try hard to work with you to make it right. So here we go. 
So the first thing we do is we press both the left and the right buttons together and we should get two A's light up there which says it's ready for synchronization. We turn on one of the channels or ports until we get a reading, which we did, and that should say that, hey, we're ready to go. Now I'll turn on the other one, they should be synchronized. And at the moment I either wasn't quick enough or this doesn't look like it's working right. So let me turn them both off again. I'm going to go through the power sequence again. So there we are, we've got power. We're in synchronization mode with the two A's. Now I'm going to just turn on the other channel first this time, for example. And it says A, which is 100%. 8, which is 80%. That should now be synchronized. I'm going to turn on the other channel for giggles. We're at four for 40% and everything's golden. Now the way this is supposed to work is if you turn off your bike and you have an ignition switch power supply to the bike or you disconnect it from the battery. After doing so, obviously the display is going to go blank. You've left this where it was set. This had your gloves and your jacket or your footwear and your jacket or whatever your combination was had everything set the way you wanted it. You ate lunch, you got gas, you took your potty break, whatever the case may be, and you hop back on the bike, the functionality is supposed to be that when you reapply power to this unit, it remembers where you were. And again, we're assuming you did not change this controller because this is providing input to the heat troller, this remote. So let's reapply power and see if we get four and 80% and we do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for just a moment. I'm going to leave it disconnected. So let's pull the power. I'm going to leave it dis disconnected for, you know, 20 minutes and see if it works. If it does, I'm going to have to eat my previous words where I said that the remote shouldn't make a difference. This thing should remember where it was. And the tech was saying, yeah, but this is kind of talking to it, telling it what, where it was. And if it couldn't maintain sync, then it screwed everything up. And I was poo-pooing that and not liking that answer. So if this works, I'm going to eat my words. And, you know, like I always say, you know, we will double back and tell you if we were thought we were wrong, we were right, we'll tell you we're right. And if we thought we were right and we were wrong, we'll tell you we're wrong. So let's, let's pause for a moment and get back to you in just a bit and show you the result. All right, we've let some time lapse, so we're going to give this a try. Again, we've got a literally a motorcycle battery. This in particular is literally a Harley Davidson motorcycle battery. Um, we have the Gerbing dual port or dual channel remote controller with LED display. We have Gerbing's wireless dual port or dual channel remote. I have left the settings where they were. They were at 40% and 80% if you'll remember. And the situation we were trying to re diagnose or remedy was that synchronization was not maintained after an extended power outage. So what that means is you would get to you know your gas station stop your breakfast lunch dinner stop your bio break stop and disconnect power from the controller and it would lose synchronization with the remote and you would have to go through the synchronization process again if you have watched the original video for the um gerbing review or the um heated jacket review the gerbing lt hybrid I think it was, um, you'll know that this is normally tucked away inside an interior pocket of the jacket and not readily visible or accessible. So having to get in and manip manipulate the controls in order to reestablish sync after every stop would have been highly inconvenient at best. And there are competitors that maintain that without incident. So that would be a great detriment. Um, and would be uncharacteristic of, of gerbing in general. So let's go ahead and reapply power, just as you would on your bike. This would be coming from your battery or somewhere uh, into the red connector on the heat troller. 
and we get a acknowledgement that power has been applied and lo and behold it says 40 percent on the first channel and 80 percent on the second channel so this means one or two things one i didn't let enough time go by between where we left off and now and it didn't lose sync and the question if that's the case is how long does it take does it take 15 minutes? Does it take a half hour? Does it take six hours? Does it take two days? You know, how long can we expect it to make, um, how long can we expect it to maintain synchronization under normal circumstances? You know, what would be reasonable? And I would, you know, give the manufacturer credit and say, if you haven't used it for a season, you know, you stopped using it in the late spring when it started getting warmer and you didn't use it again until the fall, I really couldn't fault the device for not remembering the synchronization. And oh, by the way, in order for that to, to, to happen, um, you probably would have to have this still turned on. If you didn't have the remote, theoretically, it should maintain where you, or remember where you had your last settings. But I think a, a, a half season's worth of off time is unrealistic. So. The other possibility, doubling back here, is that I was wrong and the tech was right and the fault was in the remote. And just because I have five decades worth of experience working with electronics doesn't mean sometimes I get thrown a curveball or get shown, um, you know, how things work nowadays. It happens from time to time. And, you know, I'm grateful for the educational experience. I could cross my arms and make a grimace face and say, you know, this is all total BS, or I could learn from it and work through it and continue to evolve, which is what I choose to do. So I'm looking this as, I'm looking at this as a positive experience for a number of reasons. One, I allowed the manufacturer or the provider of the device, the warming stores who I purchased it from, they escalated to their Gerbing product specialist. I still don't know whether that's an internal resource or a Gerbing provided resource. Um, explained the situation to them and allowed them the opportunity to make it right. They took ownership and accountability for my customer satisfaction and my experience. They didn't try and pawn it off on my not doing something right and to their credit they sent me a replacement controller gratis which and, and again i'm not sponsored or getting reimbursement or anything i'm just joe blow customer like the rest of you and they gave me a replacement controller it didn't charge me for shipping or anything so this would be 25 dollars plus shipping and they just sent it to me because they believed that this was the the culprit this was the root cause and at the moment based on the testing methodology that we just use, I have to say reluctantly and reluctantly because I'm wrong that they were correct and that it appears that the replacement controller um, was the cure. What I don't know is if that's because this replacement controller has a newer CR2032 battery in it or there's a problem with the chipset or something and the original controller that was addressed by the new one. So my next step is to put a replacement CR2032 battery in this. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll pay the money for a replacement battery, put it in here and see if that makes this thing start behaving as it should. And if it does, I'll post a follow-up video. If it does not, we're gonna assume it's a de defective controller and it's addressed by this segment and I won't do a follow-up. But if it is, you know, I'll, I'll let you know that it was the battery and that, you know, you may have to anticipate either replacing the battery because these things have been sitting in the channel too long or their supplier told Gerbing that the batteries were new and they weren't. They, you know, had a very limited shelf life, you know, whatever the case may be. So, again, the takeaway is if I put yet another follow-up on, either the replacement controller was not the long-term solution and or replacing the 2032 battery in the suspect controller wound up fixing the problem with this controller. So I hope you found this um, review helpful. I hope you found it informative and I'm willing to bet that you found information here 
that you weren't finding on other channels regarding review of this heat troller and the dual remote. And if that's the case, I invite you to like, subscribe, and click on notifications uh, so that you will get more content like this when it becomes available from the channel. Ride safe. Namaste.